Good evening and welcome to our special Good Evening, uh, Good Friday worship service as we look to the one who goes to the cross to take away our sins. Our sins are many, they are great. The Lord Jesus laid on himself the iniquity of us all. By his wounds we are healed. We have peace and joy in Jesus. Yet on this solemn day, we, we look to the one who, who took our sins and we, we consider the, the price that he paid, the suffering that he endured. And it was for us and for our salvation. May the Lord bless us this evening as we consider what our Lord has done for us. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading for tonight comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52 into chapter 53. We invite you to read along with, in the worship folder, or you can listen as the word of God is spoken to you. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told they will see, and what they have not heard they will understand. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. The transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and the, with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, when your son hung on the cross, he cried out to you in agony and grief. You gave him the strength so that he might also cry out in victory and peace. You gave him the strength to accomplish our salvation so that death might be destroyed and life restored. Have mercy on us all our days and preserve us in true faith until life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our first hymn, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, hymn number 100. Thy guilt and evil bearing. 
ocean on grows weak and faint to slaughter land without complaint but spotless life to offer bear shame and stripes and wounds and death anguish and mockery and says willing all this I saw Savior, Him God the Father chose to send to gain for us His favor. Go forth, my Son, the Father said, and free my children from their dread of guilt and condemnation the wrath and stripes are hard to bear but by your passion they will share the fruit of your salvation Yes, most willingly, I'll bear what you command me. I will conform to your decree. I'll do what you have asked me. Oh, wondrous love, what have you done? This first word we will meditate on, the first word of Jesus from the cross, Luke chapter 23, verses 26 to 34. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us. 
and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. What selfless love. What incredible love. The Lamb of God goes uncomplaining forth as he who had no sin became sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. He put himself in harm's way to save us. He put himself in harm's way to care for us who deserve no such thing. For the lost, the, the sinful, the, the wicked, Jesus goes to the cross and he dies for the sins of the whole world, including the sins of those who nailed him to that cross. Wearied by the unforgiving blows and mockery and contempt that is all around him, and yet he still utters words of compassion for those who did not deserve such compassion. When you and I are, are hard-pressed, when we are, are stressed, our tempers flare. Our fists clench. And we are quick to make our frustration and anger known. We are quick to anger. We grab on to grudges. We are tight-fisted with forgiveness. But here, our Savior, our Rescuer, our dear Lord Jesus stretches out his arms and his hands are nailed to the cross. And even in that position, he opens his mouth and he opens his hand to forgive. Here we have both the substitute and the sacrifice. He hangs in our place for our sins and speaks righteous words of forgiveness that we could not bring forth. And he brings both a fulfillment to the law and grace that covers us. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We sing, Lamb of God, pure and holy. Consider now the second word from the cross. These words of Jesus from Luke chapter 23, 
verses 38 to 43. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since we are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. These are the words of our Lord. Today. No waiting period. No hoops to jump through. No paperwork to fill out and sign. No amount of deeds to try to make up for a life misused. Instead, the announcement was of a free pardon. Immediate. The gift of paradise announced to a lost soul about to perish A pardon that puts on display the abundant grace of our God and reveals his kindness and calls us out to believe and put our trust in him. A thief hung on the cross, convicted for his crimes, and he looked upon a man who had been beaten and mistreated. And yet by faith, he saw the king, the spirit, was at work through the word of forgiveness that Jesus spoke. Faith was kindled and created and brought forth a, a beautiful confession marked by, matched by a, a marvelous declaration. Here we see saving faith held up for all to see. In faith, this man looked to Jesus and called out his name. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. A man dying on the cross had been brought to life by the Spirit and his heart remade. And now his ears were blessed to hear his Savior speak. Words of sweet consolation. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. By faith, By the Spirit's work in our hearts, we make a similar confession. Dead in sin, deserving eternal punishment for our many misdeeds, yet by the gift of faith and the Spirit working in our hearts through the power of the word of Jesus, we look to the man on the center cross and we put our trust in him. By faith, we make a similar confession. And by faith, we hear the same declaration of the king. Pardon, forgiven, paradise bound, given to you, given to me. Praise be to God for Jesus and his word of truth. saying, Lamb of God, pure and holy, stanza three. Lamb of God, pure and holy, and suffer ever patient and lowly yourself to scorn did offer all sins you carried for us else had despair Peace.
peace be with us, O oh, oh, Jesus. The third word of our Savior from the cross comes from John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. With these words we see how Jesus in compassion deals with those he loves and cares for. As he suffers for the whole world, as he suffers for the, the sins of the whole world, he issues words of eternal salvation and undeserved forgiveness. And yet, in love, he still takes time to look upon those that he cares for and tends to their needs. From the cross, he would tend to the needs of his mother to make sure that she was cared for in her daily life. Jesus cares for you, soul and body, body and soul as well. He cares for your daily needs. He cares for your eternal salvation. He cares for you. This year, as we make the journey to the cross, perhaps more than most years, we have questions and concerns about our, our daily life and our physical needs. As we come today singing praises to the one who would die for our sins and secure a place for us in heaven and give us paradise with our Heavenly Father, as we lay our sins at the foot of the cross and receive comfort and assurance that our sins are, are fully forgiven, remember, dear friends, that this same Jesus has taught us to pray for our daily bread. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He cares for you, soul and body body and soul. Lay your sins and your worries at the foot of the cross and hear his words of assurance and care. Do not worry. Will not my Father care for you as he cares for the sparrows? Will he not so much more take care of you? Do not worry. The same Jesus who takes care of his mother takes care of you. Who wipes away your sin, chases away your worries. Put your trust in him. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. Sing our next hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, hymn 125. Contempt on all my 
my pride. Forbidden, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down, did there such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a word from the cross as recorded for us from Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 to 49. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, the lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. In the darkness of Calvary, in the middle of the day, God forsook God. Father and Son, who had enjoyed perfect unity since before the beginning, now ripped apart because of our sin. In those lonely moments, the sun refused to shine as God the Father turned his back on his son. He turned his back on his son in utter disgust because of the sins that he bore. He was wearing our sins as he absorbed them into himself and became sin for us. The Holy God separated from His Son. The Son separated from His Father. And the pain that Jesus bore left Him in, in complete agony. The wrath of God being poured out against our sins. Hell in our place. He endured it. And it hurts. But he took on that punishment so that we might be reconciled to God. In the darkness, we look at the cross and we see that awful price that he paid to save us. And as he shouts out, we, we stand in silence and awe. And we look at the cross. And we see our Savior, the one who hangs in our place. 
He is the one who comes to save us. The only one who could endure that pain, who could pay for our sins, who could undergo that separation, went to the cross to face that awful hour to spare us from the agony that is separation from our God and Father. He who had no sin came and took our place so that we could take his place as beloved sons and daughters of the Father. And Jesus did this so that we might have that joy for all eternity. He endured that pain to spare us the pain that our sins deserved. Sing our next hymn. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. In 129. fifth word from John chapter 19 verses 28 and 29. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. No box would be left unchecked. No thing left undone. He came to fully accomplish our salvation. He came to fulfill all of Scripture. 
And he does it. He does it all for us. He fulfills all of Scripture down to the very last detail. And so in his final moments, he fulfills every bit of prophecy and brings to mind once more his humanity. The Son of God dies in our place as the Son of Man. With lips parched from the approach of death, he receives a, a final moistening of the lips so that he could manage a few last words. The Son of Man, who is also the, the Son of God, hangs on the tree of the cross as a, a curse for us. The Son of God went forth to war, and though the devil thought he had won the day, our hero, well, he would have the final say. And so he checks off all the boxes. He makes his final preparations. He suffers. He dies in our place, in our flesh, so that we might be cleansed from all of our sins. We sing, O dearest Lord, thy sacred head. O dearest Lord, thy sacred head, with thorns was pierced for me. sacred hands with nail was pierced for me oh shed thy blessing on my hands that they may work for thee oh dearest lord thy sacred feet with nails were pierced for me Pierce for me, O oh, pour thy spirit in my heart, that I may live for thee. The sixth word from John chapter 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We know that these words are not words of defeat, nor are they words of just mere exhaustion. These are the words of completion. These were words that uh, uh, announced a, a declaration of, of satisfaction. In the Greek, one word, to telestai, paid in full. The debt that we owed because of our many sins, paid in full. A feat that we could never accomplish or tackle, a debt that we could never erase, and yet our Savior, our dear friend Jesus, would accomplish it for us. The seed of the woman promised in Eden 
hung on Calvary's hill and announced his victory. The death blow to the devil would be his death. The payment for sin had been paid for in full. The ransom price for sinners handed over in totality. The rescue mission promised from the beginning had been accomplished. The hero stretched out in pain would in fact cry out in victory. It is finished. May that be our cry as well, our battle cry when our defeated enemy comes to drag us down into fear and uncertainty. When the devil tries with all his might to throw your sins back in your face, remember the word your Savior cried to tell us, I paid in full. It is finished. Yes, my sins are great and many, but I have a Savior in Jesus Christ who has made satisfaction for my sin. And God is pleased with his sacrifice. And so where Jesus is now, in heaven so too I shall be. My sins have been paid for in Jesus. And now by faith in Christ, you and I live for him who has set us free. And we live in his peace. And we live in his victory. We sing, Go to Dark Gethsemane in 104. seventh word from Luke chapter 23 verses 33 to 46. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. 
Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. In confidence. The son once again calls out to his father. Knowing that his father will hear him and take his request. For he has accomplished the father's will. He commits his spirit to his father knowing that the father is well pleased. And the father hears the call of his son. Sin has been atoned for. No other sacrifice is needed. The punishment has been paid. Now, there is peace. This is the peace that God now gives to each believer. This is the confidence that we have in Christ. God is our Father. We are His children. Every day of our life is lived in that Good Friday gospel. Our sins have been washed away. The blood of the Lamb covers us. Enemies of God no more. Instead, through faith in Jesus and his holy sacrifice, we can face each day knowing that we are beloved children of God. And we will not perish. But we will live. Even as we face death, we have this confidence for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life through Christ's death and his resurrection that would follow that we know is coming we can lie down and sleep in peace knowing that when our last hour comes Our Father will be waiting to receive our spirit into the home prepared for us by Christ Jesus, our Lord. So take a deep breath and know that you are dearly loved children of God. In Christ Jesus, you are at peace. You have confidence that your Father will hear you when you call out to him. He will receive your spirit as he received Jesus. So we breathe that in. We find confidence in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, when your son hung on the cross, 
He cried out to you in agony and grief. You gave him the strength so that he might also cry out in victory and peace. You gave him the strength to accomplish our salvation so that death might be destroyed and life restored. Have mercy on us all our days and preserve us in the true faith that's a life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for the whole church that our gracious Father would defend her from the devil and keep her faithful to her Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have revealed your saving name to the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Protect us from the assaults of the evil one and help us remain faithful to your word so that in every adversity we may stand firm in our faith and give ourselves fully to our Savior's work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for those who serve in the public ministry, for all people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, you rule over all things for the good of your people. Preserve us from divisive spirits and false teachers. Give your servants the grace to proclaim Christ joyfully in word and deed, so that all who hear them may come to know their Savior better and be strengthened for their lives and service through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for those who are being instructed in the word that they may remain firm in the simple faith of baptism. Almighty and everlasting God, you have made us your own dear children by the washing of rebirth and renewal in the Holy Spirit. Give strength to all who are buried with Christ in baptism that each day they may die to sin and rise again to new and holy lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for our earthly governments, our rulers, and all who are in authority. Almighty and everlasting God, you have established earthly governments to keep a measure of order in this dying world and to protect us from the disorder of sin. Give to all rulers the wisdom to govern well and to all citizens the desire to obey them so that we may live peaceful lives in all godliness and holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray that our gracious Father would protect us and our communities from the many earthly calamities that threaten us. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, on all sides we are surrounded by danger from wars and famine, from disease and pestilence and pandemic, with the devil begrudging us every minute of our lives. Protect us from all these miseries so that your name may still be glorified in them and so that we may safely pass through them to your heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for those who are outside the church that they may come to know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, your son was lifted up on the cross so that he might draw all people to himself. Through the proclamation of your word, mercifully gather from the nations a people that are your very own, that we may join together around your throne in glory to praise and thank you forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, let us pray for our enemies and for all those who hate us. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, no one can harm us without grieving you, whose name we bear. We ask that you would change the hearts of those who work against us and who hate us without reason. Give them repentance and faith so that they may be glad with us and find joy in you and your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And dear friends, let us pray for all who suffer under cross and trial. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son into the world to bear our griefs and to carry our sorrows. Help those who are suffering for your name's sake and who are struggling against temptation, that they may not be overwhelmed with sadness, but find relief 
in your grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, the seventh candle is removed from sight, but it remains lit as the hope of Christ remains. That his time in the tomb would be short. The life of Jesus, the light of Christ, would once again come out, out into the world. The Son of God, the Holy One, would not see decay. We put our hope in Christ, and we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Absence of a lighted candle has symbolized the three days spent by Christ in the tomb. The light of the unextinguished candle will soon ignite the Paschal candle in anticipation of the light of Easter morning. By this light, we are reminded that the light of Christ cannot be extinguished by the darkness of sin and death. Instead, Christ's death and resurrection gives light and life to his faithful followers so that we might spread that light throughout the world. Christ has defeated sin, death, and hell, so that all those who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life.
the noise of the closing of the Bible is to acknowledge that our sins were paid for on the cross. Christ's work was done. We want to thank you for joining us for this special worship service. We encourage you to come and, and join us for uh, worship on Easter Sunday. Uh, come to the YouTube page uh, as we continue to have online services. Uh, visit our website for more information as well. We want to encourage you also to make use of the opportunity to come together with other Wells members at this unique uh, chance to uh, to come and have a, a virtual worship service with uh, perhaps thousands of believers uh, around the country and around the world. So 6 p.m. Uh, wells.net, W-E-L-S.net, uh, a chance to have a, a very special Easter service despite some of the, the trying circumstances that are around us. Uh, may God uh, remind us that our sins have been paid for in full, uh, that the one who cares for our soul also cares for our bodies, and that he has given us um, this, this wonderful assurance that our sins have been paid for. That he stood in our place, he took on the punishment of our sins, and he has given us his righteousness. And we wait with eager anticipation for the joy of Easter, uh, where we sing again our alleluias to our Lord who, who lived, who died, who rose again for us. Come and join us again on Easter Sunday for an online worship service at 9.30. And don't forget about that special worship service uh, at 6 o'clock at sentwells.net. God bless. Have a good night. Have a good Friday. <laughs>